want to encourage you to have your Bible out and open to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We are going to get there in just a moment in our study, but as I've announced, I want to talk about the Christian and social media. Social media has become a very prominent part of life in the 21st century. It is estimated that 70% of Americans use social media regularly, often every day. It is also estimated that 3.6 billion people in the world use social media. Now, that number, 3.6, is significant because the total population of the earth is estimated as between 7 and 8 million people. That means that half of the people in the world are on social media. And when we talk about social media, we're talking about many different platforms. That is, different ways that we can be connected to people electronically through the internet. The most popular one is Facebook. By, by large, Facebook is the most popular one. It is estimated that there are over 2.7 billion monthly active users on Facebook. Next to that would be Instagram, and that is 1.2 billion monthly active users on Instagram. And then after that would be TikTok, that barely measures up at 700 million monthly active users. Advertisers want this information because a company or an organization's advertising budget only goes so far. Instead of putting ads in newspapers, which are almost fossils, or uh, television or radio, this information tells them that using social media, that can get their advertisements before the largest number of people. That's why now when you're scrolling through your news feed on social media, you encounter all of these lovely ads there. That's because there are so many of us on there. So many of us there, the advertisers cannot ignore that. But there's, there's also Twitter, there's YouTube, Snapchat, Twitch, Pinterest, Zoom, WeChat, MeWe, and the list literally goes on and on. Some of them more popular than others, but all of them really have their own niche of society or their own niche of, of interest to those that are using it in different ways that they're being used. But there are a lot of people on social media today. Well, I wouldn't be a preacher worth my salt if I didn't stand up here and decry the evils of social media, right? There are some negatives to social media, and, and it, it's people other than preachers who point out much of this. The first thing is that social media like many other things, can become addictive so that people are spending way too much time with their devices being connected to people or connected to things. And, and that leads to the second point. There are professionals who have noted that the rise of the popularity of social media has caused a number of people to become detached from personal relationships. They have all of their friends on Facebook instead of enjoying personal face-to-face -face interaction. Now, we all took a break from that over this past year, but, but this has been noted uh, in, in previous years leading up to the pandemic. Uh, social media also creates a form. Because it's not face-to-face, -face, then it allows some people to let their guard down, and they express themselves in ways that they wouldn't normally do. And so there, there's a, a lot of rudeness and a lot of meanness that is found on social media. Uh, also, cyberbullying. I believe many of us have heard about that, where young people have committed suicide or attempted to commit suicide, blaming it on cyberbullying. A lot of that can be traced back to social media. And of course, because there are so many people on social media, it is a means of spreading sin and spreading falsehood and lies and spreading false doctrine and religious error. So there's a lot of evil 
that can be done through social media. But I want to tell you that we don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. There are a lot of benefits to social media, and I enjoy many of these benefits, and I know many of you do as well. I like the instant communication that social media gives us, that we can talk to someone on the other side of the world instantly, that we can be alerted, that we can be told of things that are happening right here, right now, as they are unfolding. I like that. That's good in a lot of ways. I like the way social media keeps me connected with my family and my friends. As my niece and nephew are growing up in Oklahoma, well, back when I was growing up, uh, pictures would be taken of them, and then you'd have to wait to use up that whole roll of film because you don't waste a roll of film. So you take some pictures, and then you make sure all of that film is used, then you send it off to get it developed, and then those those pictures get sent back to you, and then you select a few, and you put it in a card or an envelope, you put a stamp on it, and mail it off, and a week later, you'd get the pictures. Now, it's instant. I can see the day of my niece or my nephew's birthday, just exactly what was happening there. And I like that. I like being connected with them in that way. Uh, renewing old friendships. Uh, I've lost track of a lot of my classmates from high school. Now, through social media, I'm reconnected with them. And I like that. I appreciate that. I enjoy that. Also, social media has different groups available. If you've got an interest, and, and I'll tell you, whatever your interest is, there's already a number of groups available on social media that you can go to and, and, and become a part of. If it's model trains, there, there's all kinds of groups for that. If it's uh, quilting, there's all kinds of groups for that. If it's, if it's cooking, what kind of food are you talking about? And you can look at that specific group. Many of you know that I like to play the guitar. Not only are there different groups on social media for guitar players, but they've got specific groups for the specific kind of instrument, the specific type and model of guitar that you like. And you can join that group. I enjoy that. I like that. As social media, as we pointed out, is a great way to promote business. You can buy just about anything used through social media. You can be connected that way. Uh, last month, when Christy and I went to Oklahoma and Arkansas to help with the sale of my dad's things, we had a very successful sale. It was advertised on social media alone. And there were plenty of people showing up. And it wasn't just young people either. There were some gray hairs that showed up because of the advertisements on social media. And of course, the spread of the gospel. If it... if if this is a vehicle that allows us to spread sin and error, it can also be used to spread the truth. We're very much involved as a congregation in utilizing social media to spread the gospel and to teach the gospel. I've done that personally, as, as all of you know. Uh, others of you have done the same in sharing things and sending things. So it is a very useful tool. The point that I would make at, at, here about social media is that it is that it is a tool. It is a tool that every Christian has the right to use. So don't go home today saying the preacher condemned Facebook and I've got to get off of it or I'm not going to go to heaven. Nothing could be further from the truth. It is a tool that we can use. But here's the thing. God holds us responsible for the way we use. This, just like the way we use anything else. And that's what brings us to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. When we were away on vacation this last week, the, the congregation that we attended on Sunday and on Wednesday, were, they were studying 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And setting through those classes, uh, going through these points about agape love, a thought came to my mind about making the application to the use of social media. 1 Corinthians 13 is a very familiar and a very beloved passage. It talks about agape love. It talks about that, that greatest gift. It talks about the greatest commandment that we are given. 
And this passage is often read at weddings and apply to the love that spouses are to have for one another or that brethren are supposed to have for one another. However, there are principles set forth in this chapter that have a much broader application than to just the marriage relationship or the home or the local church. In fact, if you look at it, the purpose it was written was to make application to the use of the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit in the local church. That's the immediate application that was made of this teaching. So that tells me it's much broader than just the marriage relationship. Tell you what let's do. Let's go through verses 4 through 7, and let's make some observations and some applications to the way you and I should be conducting ourselves as we are on Facebook or or, or Twitter, or Instagram, or whatever it is, as we are using social media. And if you're here and you're not on social media, don't tune me out, because we're going to be making points that are applicable to, to all of us as we conduct ourselves with others and we communicate with others. But let's be thinking about social media. When we, we begin reading the passage, and we learn that love is long-suffering. For love is patient. The Greek word here, macrothumia, is a compound word meaning long. The first part means long and the second part means wrath. And it is describing a person that's got a long fuse in contrast to the person that has a short fuse. Here's a quick-tempered person. Love is just the opposite. Love can put up with a lot and put up with a lot until it explodes. Are you and I that way as we're on social media? Social media gives us, as as we said, instant communication. We can respond, we can fire back just like that. But that's not always a good thing, is it? It's not always a good thing to respond to something instantly. James tells us, James 1 verses 19 and 20, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, Slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Sometimes when you're on social media, you're going to see things, you're going to read things that are going to make you angry, and your first inclination is going to be fire away a response and post it up there. I want to tell you, love doesn't act that way. Love is patient. Love is long-suffering. Love is going to take the time to get all the facts and learn the best way to respond, if it's best to respond at all. And by the way, you don't have to respond to everything you see on social media. I don't know if you knew that or not, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to. Sometimes it's best not to. Proverbs 15, 28 says, the heart of the righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. Take your time. Do I even need to be involved in this discussion? Do I even need to to respond to this? And if so, what's the best way to do it? There are two verses in Proverbs 18 that are very pertinent to to this thread, if you'll allow me to say it that way. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. The first one to plead his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him. It's best to give some thought to whether or not we're going to get involved in a discussion and and how to be involved in that discussion before we just dive in. I've, I've happened upon a few things as I've been scrolling through social media only to learn that the person that started the discussion closed off the comments. It went in a direction he wasn't ready for it to go in. He was reproved or she was reproved or, or it has been closed to further comments, or the post has been deleted altogether. It would be better if we would just think before we respond, before we speak, before we type. Love is patient. Be patient as you're on social media. Secondly, love is kind. The Greek word here literally means to show yourself useful. Remember, love is a verb And so agape love is known by the actions that it prompts, 
but we're talking about using social media, so there's not a lot of action involved. It's mostly reading and then responding. So here, let's talk about responding in a way that is kind. That's where those little like icons come in handy. It's nice to see where you've posted something and, and a number of people have come back and they've liked that. It makes you feel a little bit better. Or you express something that is causing you sorrow and you get those heart-shaped responses. Or, or the, I'm sorry, or it's not on here, but, but, but Facebook has the I care, the, the hug icon, I guess it is. It's nice to receive some of those. So it's nice to give those. So as you're using social media, when you're responding to something, you're responding to a person. Be kind as you are responding. That's what love would call for us to do, to be kind. Love does not envy. Love is not jealous. And social media can give us plenty of reasons to feel and to express envy and jealousy. Social media is where people post things that they're excited about. Someone is in a relationship. And that, that pops up on your feed. Does anybody propose in private anymore? Or do they always make sure someone's got a camera there to take a picture of him down on one knee offering that ring? Someone's in a relationship. Someone is engaged. That's great news. Unless you're the person that wishes you could be in a relationship. Or, your marriage has just ended in divorce. See, not everyone's ready to rejoice with that. Someone buys a new car. That's great, I'd like to have a new car. Someone buys a new house and they send you the link so that you can see all of the, the rooms and you see how much they paid for it and... Whew, wish I could buy a house like that. Someone goes on vacation. Wish I could go there. Someone gets a new job. Someone graduates from college. Someone's expecting a child or a grandchild. Not everyone's going to be excited about that. We have to be careful when we're on social media that we don't allow our, our pride to open the door for Satan to say, you know, you need to be envious about that. You need to be hateful towards that person because they've got something that you want and you can't have. Now, a very difficult verse of Scripture is tucked away in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, that tells us to rejoice with those who rejoice. And that's not always an easy thing to do. But love does it. Love does it. So, when you're on social media, don't allow Satan to cause you to become envious of people who are enjoying things that you wish you could enjoy right now. Don't fall into that trap. We continue on. Love does not brag. Love is not arrogant. Social media provides a perfect platform for the self-promoter. Look at me. This is my page. It's about me, and I'm going to tell you what time I got up, and what I had for breakfast, and what I'm wearing today, and how I got treated at Walmart, and what I'm having for lunch, and... Who cares? Who cares? But it keeps coming at you, right? It's all about me. Proverbs 27 verse 2 says, Let another man praise you, and not your own mouth. A stranger, and not your own lips. Christians are not in the self-promotion business. That's not what being a Christian is about. It's about Christ, and it's about His Word, and it's about His church and His people. That should be our primary focus, not, not bragging about ourselves or making it all about ourselves. And, and that's not always done. It's not always accomplished in the, in the obvious way. Hey, look at what I'm doing. Look at what's happening to me. It's also done by the individual who will make the post, I'm fed up with it. Forget it. Period. And then they just sit back and they wait for all the people. Oh, what's going on? What's wrong with you? Are you okay? That feeds their pride. That's what that is. That, that's bragging. That's arrogant. That's, hey, look at me. 
Pay attention to me. It's about me today. That's ugly. Especially when a Christian does that. You need to talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Don't, don't social media it. James chapter 5 tells us we're having problems. We need to go to our brethren. We need to depend on our brethren in person, not online. So love does not brag, is not arrogant. We, we need to check our pride at the door when we're on social media. Love does not behave rudely. The New American Standard Version says does not act unbecomingly. The Greek word here is a very interesting word, and I think it helps us to, to understand even more what's being talked about here. The Greek word means to act against the scheme, to go against the scheme. Everything is going in this direction. Well, the one who's behaving rudely is the one who's going in the opposite direction or, or is standing out to the side refusing to go along, standing out in a way that causes discomfort to others, causes others to be uncomfortable with what is happening and the way that they are behaving. Social media, just like all of the internet, can become a showcase for every form of deviant behavior. Behavior that sticks out and stands out as that which is contrary to what is right. And of course, Christians are not to be involved in anything like this. But the application I would like to make with this point is the way Christians are conducting themselves as they are carrying on conversations on social media or they are making comments on social media. Discussions on social media platforms provide evidence of some of the rudest, most unbecoming speech offered by those who call themselves Christians. Some Christians have been, have been asked, well, what is the most discouraging thing that you, you have about, that, about social media? What, what discourages you the most about social media? It's not the things, sinful things that are posted. That's not it. It's not the waste of time. <clears throat> the most common response is the way Christians talk to others on social media is the most discouraging thing. Social media is a tool, but it's a tool that sometimes brings out brethren's worst. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 still says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearer. Just because you're on social media, just because you're not communicating verbally doesn't mean you can throw away the rules. No, when we communicate by texting, by typing in, we need to be very careful that we're not being rude in the way we're talking to people or talking about people. I make it a rule that if it's, if it's strong enough that I feel like I need to reply, I often try to do it privately. Contact the person privately. Say, hey, you know, you're way off base with this. You might want to think about that. Instead of, instead of letting it play out on a thread that's going to go on and on forever, why don't we take a page out of the book that left us and take Apollos aside and talk to him privately about the matter. Remember, we are to treat others the way we want to be treated. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. Love does not behave rudely. And being on social media doesn't give you a, a, a license to go away from that, from that rule. Do not be rude on social media. Love does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. There are two thoughts here. I put them together on this slide. The first one is love does not seek its own. That is, love doesn't make everything about itself. Again, pride is what's being discussed here. A person who is seeking their own has a it's my way or the highway attitude. Or again, it's all about me. I'm the important one. This is my page. It's all about me. Love doesn't act that way. Love 
says you can't put others down just because they disagree with you. You can't treat them in an ungodly way just because they're not agreeing with you. It's not, it's not your agenda that needs to be put forward. And, and here's where I'd want to make this point, this observation. In the, in the news business, there's a lot of credit that is given to the person who breaks a story. If they are the reporter that, that gets the scoop first and they're the first one to report it, they get credit for that, and there's, there's a lot to that. You'll even see it on, uh, when I'm watching sports, I'll see down in the bottom that, that aggravating ticker that goes across all the time uh, and, and tells you that, that such and such an athlete is, is this such and such is happening to them, first reported by so-and-so. They're giving credit to the person that breaks the news, and, and that, can, that can happen to us as individuals. You know, if you're the first one to tell somebody something, and to, to see how they respond, there's something to that. It appeals to our pride. We need to be very careful about that. When I'm conducting a wedding, I almost always include an announcement, do not post pictures of this event on social media. Allow the, the husband, the bride and the groom to do that. It's their wedding. Let them be the ones to put the post out. Parents should be the ones to post pictures of the newborn child, not the first relative that comes to visit at the hospital. Love does not seek its own. You don't need that fanfare. You don't need to be the one that breaks the news if it's not your news. And love is not provoked. Let me tell you, if you're easily offended, Social media is not for you. Because there are no filters and anything and everything flies right through. Unless you're conservative. Then that gets filtered out. Unless you're on a conservative platform. Then, then you learn those rules. If you're easily offended, social media is not for you. But there are some people who are. There are some people that walk around with a chip on their shoulder. There are some people that are looking for something to be offended about. Don't do that. Love doesn't act that way. Here's what you do when you're on social media and you see something you don't disagree with. You know what you do? Just keep on scrolling. Keep on scrolling. Just like when you've got your remote control and something comes on as you're looking through the channels and you're not interested, you don't like it, Click to the next one. You don't stop and write a letter to the president of the network. You just keep on going. Love doesn't get all bent out of shape and blow up over every little thing that comes along. Remember that when you're on social media. Love does not keep account of wrongs. And this is an interesting characteristic as well. This comes from a Greek word that was actually a bookkeeping term. It meant to write down in a ledger or a book a business account and keep a record of it. And of course, the point that the Holy Spirit is making here is that love doesn't do that. Love doesn't keep track of every bad thing that everyone has done against them and to hold it against them someday later. No, love lets things go. Love puts all that mess in the paper shredder and it's gone. Here's the point that I want to make with this, this characteristic of love. Those of us who are on social media need to remember that anything and everything that we post is recorded. It's there. It's, it's kept in servers that are found all over the world. And we might go up and we might delete it. We might go up and we might take it down. I promise you it's still there. And the people who know how to do it can still find it. Be very careful of the things that you post on social media. There used to be a time whenever you applied for a job, one of the first things the employer would do is go to social media to find you, to learn about you. Now, if you'll just show up and fill out an application, they'll give you a job on the spot. But someday we're going to get back to normal, and it's going to go back to where social media is going to be where people go to find out just what kind of a person you really are. 
And the things that you type in, the words that you say, the pictures that you post, the things that you like, the groups that you join, it all says something about you. And if it's negative, then it's going to hurt your influence. And I remind you what Jesus said about the importance of maintaining your influence. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It's then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Don't let social media be that tool that Satan uses to destroy your influence for the cause of Christ. And it can happen to those of us who are older just as easily as it can happen to those of us who are younger. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. I've got to tell you, it's disappointing to see how many Christians like and share sinful things on social media. Posting pictures of themselves involved in sinful activity. Liking those pictures of others who are involved in sinful activities or or post about those things. Maybe it's a co-worker and they're on vacation and there they are at a bar and they've got a drink in their hand. Wish you were here. Ding, I wish I was. What? Why are you liking that? Or the person says, I just went to such and such a movie. It's just the best movie It's rated R for all the wrong reasons. What are you doing promoting that? And yet Christians do. Or every spring. Every spring, I dread getting on social media because you've got all of these parents and grandparents that have all their pictures of their daughters and their granddaughters in their prom dresses going to the prom, bing, bing, liking it and loving it. Really? Really? Have we forgotten what the Bible teaches about a modest dress and about dancing? It's disappointing. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but instead it rejoices in the truth. Be careful of the things that you're liking, the things that you're sharing, the things that you are putting out there and and allowing to come on my feed where you're telling me this is something I need to be doing. And we both know better. We both know better. Or the, the, the things that have cuss words in it. I can't tell you how many times Christians have shared things and forwarded things that have cuss words in it. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? No, love does not rejoice in iniquity. Love rejoices in the truth. In Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 18 through the end of the chapter, Paul, the Apostle Paul, describes the moral decline of the Gentiles who leave God. And it's much like that spiral of the judges. It just gets worse and worse and worse. All kinds of sinful things there in Romans chapter 1. Look at the way it ends. Chapter 1, verse 32, "...who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them." Be careful who you give those likes to. Not everyone deserves them. Christian, have your brain turned on when you're on social media. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. It rejoices in the truth. And then finally... Verse 7 of our text says that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love sticks with and supports one even when it appears there's no reason left for doing so. Love does not give up on people. Now there can be times when you're on social media when you encounter things that make you ready to give up. You see something that someone's doing somewhere and you're led to believe that's the way it is everywhere. Just because some small group over here is burning the American flag doesn't mean it's happening in every town in America. Calm down. Calm down. It's easy to get carried away with the way things are packaged for us in the media and it's called social media. Yeah, things are packaged for us. Remember, things are not always 
as they seem on social media. We need to be getting our strength and our direction for life from the scriptures, not from social media. But 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33 says, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Proverbs 14, verse 7 says, Go from the presence of a foolish man when you do not perceive in him the lips of knowledge. There are times when you do need to block that individual on social media. That's what that button is there for. To unfriend them. I've unfriended people on Facebook before. I've blocked people on social media before. I love the uh, snooze for 30 days. I love that button. I get tired of somebody having their pity party or promoting themselves or whatever else it may be. Snooze you for 30 days. You can do that. Nothing wrong with that. And there are some people you do need to block. There are some things you do need to see. There are some you do need to unfriend. But you don't treat your brethren that way. You don't treat your brethren that way. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Christians never give up on their brethren. We need to have the wisdom to know how to balance that. What do we need to get rid of? Every once in a while, it's good to go through your list of friends and, and weed some of those people out. Nothing wrong with that at all. But you never give up on your brethren. You never give up on them. Love will not allow you to do so. Social media is a great tool for us to use. And I'm not discouraging any of us from using it. The church here uses it. We have a Facebook page. We have a, a place on Instagram. And we have a place on YouTube. And that's all in addition to our website. So it's being used. We're using these platforms for good. And we can use that. We can do the same as individuals as well. But it has to be done wisely. For those of us who think that, that social media is a place where we can go and be anonymous, and, and because we're not around anyone else, then that means we're not around God. That simply is not true. The last verse in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 14 says, For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. That includes the things that we post, and the things that we like, and the things that we share on social media. So let's be wise while we're using this tool. And where can we go for some good wisdom? 1 Corinthians 13 is a great place for us to go. If you're here and you're not yet a Christian, let's talk about that for just a moment. You need to be saved. You need to be saved of your sins. And that's why God sent Christ into the world. To die on the cross so that the penalty can be paid for sin. And that penalty having been paid... That, that freedom, that salvation from sin is offered to you through the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then act upon that belief in faith. Do what Jesus tells you to do to be saved, to confess Him before others, to repent of your sins, and to be baptized in water for the remission of those sins. If that's your desire, we would be honored to help you and assist you in becoming a Christian right here, right now. If you need to make things right as an erring Christian, if you need our prayers and encouragement as a struggling Christian, whatever your spiritual need is, let it be made known by coming forward as we stand and sing this invitation.